All right, welcome. In this lab, we're going to give some feedback on the Pentium Lab. And remember, you're always welcome to uh, redo labs and resubmit them. And when you do that, what you do is you would grab a new fresh copy from the content library, and then you can write on that and then submit that one through email through our normal kind of process there for turning in makeup work. Okay, so some things with the Pentium Lab. On this top part, we want to make a data table and when we talk about a table we want to have it you know actually be like a table meaning with like rows and columns and if you look at what we want to be collecting from the directions up here we want to collect the mass and the year so what we might do is say you know penny year and then penny mass and then we want to make sure that when we are collecting um, data that we record the units here. So year, the units are already there, like years is a unit. And you would go over here to this, to this video link, click on this link, it goes over here to your data collection, and you can just watch the pennies being weighed. If you have the volume on, you can hear me reading out the masses. So like this one, the, maybe the penny year is like 2001, and then the mass is like 2.51 grams. And then you would do the same thing for the next penny. This one's 3.10 grams. Maybe this is from like 1975. I don't remember what they were exactly, but you would just keep doing that for all your pennies. So you'd make it in this table. Make sure you have um, clear labels here at the top and then make sure you have units by your mass reading, okay? And then we're gonna go down here and we are going to make a graph. So some things about this graph, it should be a bar graph and we tell you what the axes should be right here. So it's a bar graph with mass on the x-axis and number of pennies on the y-axis. So let's scroll down here. So the mass would be, uh, and you can do this a little bit neater too using the, the drawing tool in OneNote. Um, so the mass would be on the x-axis and then the number of pennies would be on the y-axis and then you want to think about an appropriate like data range here so it looks like our mass goes from like 2.46 to like 3.1 so maybe you'd have this over here on this end be like 2.4 and over here be you know like 3.2 so you want to pick a range that matches your data and then you have to decide like you know every you know, four boxes, what that's worth. So decide what your scale is going to be before you start plotting any data points. And then our number of pennies. Well, what that means is we want to know how many pennies have a certain mass. So let's take a look over here at this data set. We can notice over here that, like, let's look at 2.51 grams. It looks like this penny weighs 2.51. So does this one. So does this one. So it looks like I have three pennies that weigh 2.51 grams. Okay, then I can look at the ones that are 2.52 and you might like color code them. So it looks like I have three pennies that weigh um, 2.52 grams. So that's what we mean by number of pennies versus mass. So what I would do is at my 2.52, I would draw a bar that's about three units high. So I think I never have more than maybe, let's see, maybe about three pennies that that have the same mass. I don't know. Let's, so you figure out what your scale is here. I don't think we need our scale to be very high. Maybe this is like one penny, two pennies, three, four, five, six. And I'd say over here that like at 2.5 grams, I have three pennies that weigh 2.5. So this is what I mean by a bar graph. And I put down here a few examples. You don't have to like watch me go through and do this, but here's some examples. So you can see if you come up with a nice scale here, you'll be able to see these groupings. So there's some groupings of pennies that weigh around 2.5, and then there's some pennies that weigh around 3.1. So this is one way in which you might do it. Here's another example. This person kind of grouped them together and said there's five pennies that are in this range, and that's, that's a reasonable way of graphing this as well. Here's another example down here. So you can really see these two um, clusters of penny masses. And the idea behind this is that these are representing different 
um, versions of the penny, like they're different isotopes. So this right here would be, you know, isotope number one, which has a mass of somewhere around 2.5. And you can like add up all these masses and average them to figure out what it is exactly. And then this is isotope number two, which has a mass around 3.1. And again, we're using these pennies as an analogy for isotopes of various atoms. When you're talking about atoms, you would have uh, your isotopes represent atoms that are all the same element but have different masses. And in this case, um, these pennies, they're all pennies, right? Um, but they have different masses. So that's why they're, we're thinking of them as being kind of like isotopes here. What happens with pennies, and you can kind of research this, if you look at the years, you'll notice that all of the heavier ones end up being pre-1982. This is where the year becomes useful. Uh, and these are all, you know, post-1982. And so what happened is they changed what the penny was made of around 1982. So before then, they were made of copper, which is denser than zinc. So now pennies are made of mostly zinc, so they're a little bit lighter. So, um, Anyways, there's some feedback on the graph and what this graph should look like. Again, it's a bar graph. Your mass is your x-axis. Your number of pennies is your y-axis. I think I cut off the label here, number of pennies. Make sure you label everything clearly. And then always come by um, afternoon tutorial if you have more questions.